Hi, it's Lisa True, and I want to share with you step one of our renovation project. The first thing that we needed to do is to decide what we wanted to do and who we were going to hire to accomplish the end result. Just like if we were going to take a trip, the first step in any project is to know what you want to have done and accomplished when you're finished. I mean, you wouldn't get in your car and just start driving if you wanted to go to a very specific place, right? You would know where you were going to go and most likely how you were going to get there. Step number one, know what you want to accomplish. Now here's maybe the more challenging part for many people. Step number two, who is going to do the work? Are you going to do it as a DIY? Or are you going to hire a professional? Either could be the right answer. It depends on what you're doing and your expertise level. The second step for us was determining the projects we were going to take on and the ones that we were going to hire a professional for. The items that we felt was important to hire a professional involved electrical, things that had a fine finish, and of course putting down the flooring and doing the kitchen counters and backsplash. Step number three, finding out which professionals we were going to hire for the job. What we found worked best was to ask for recommendations, and if we didn't have the recommendations we were looking for, to go online to sites that review companies. Looking at Google or Thumbtack was very helpful, and some people like Angie's List to know what not the contractor says about themselves, but what others have said the experience is like. Now, step number four. You want to give the same scope of work or same project details to anybody that might be looking to bid the job or give you a proposal. Why? Well, we want to be able to compare and make sure they're equal. After you receive the proposals, you want to go and what we did is just put them out on a table and look at them and make sure that all of the estimates included the entire scope of work. Now what's next? The next step is deciding who you're going to trust to help implement the vision. Now, many people say, oh, I'm just going with the cheapest, right? That is an option. And certainly we want to pay attention to the budget. However, we went based on instinct of who was going to be able to really accomplish the vision the best, give us the best product, and make the experience the most positive. Honestly, it's why people hire us for real estate. We did the same thing for our projects. And the final step before the work is to begin is to be clear on the expectations in the proposal or the contract. Well, Lisa, what do you mean by that? I mean, don't leave anything out if it's important to you. For example, let's say you need it done. I mean, a must, must date by a certain timeline. Maybe that needs to be in the contract and possibly a consequence if they don't meet that timeline. Making sure everything that has been spoken is actually in the written document. That document is important. So take a few minutes, 
read it, understand it. And if there's any items that the two of you agreed upon that's not in there, it's okay. Write it in, have you both initial it, so everybody is clear. Now, this isn't the most fun part of the process, and yet it is so necessary to get it right. I can't wait to see the next step, which is actually having my vision come true. I'd love to see your renovations and stay tuned for more tips on the next step of our project. Thank you.